I don't mean to scare anyone, but in my fourth area, I was asleep one night and I felt something in my ear and I was just like freaking out because I was like, I can't hear anything until I can wake up my companion. It was like the only time I'd ever had an American companion. So we both were like, what the heck are we going to do? Like, what is happening? So like we like t nap on our, t or knock on our neighbor's door who was a member and they were like, oh, like, let us call you a tricycle. Let's get you taken to the hospital. Like, we think there's some type of bug in there, but we didn't know what it was. We get to the hospital. So they just like stick this like instrument in my ear and like, find out later it's this cockroach that has wedged itself in my ear we get the cockroach out like the, so the, they ended up sending me home after taking half of it out because they couldn't get the rest so like we might have to get it surgically removed i'm like yeah okay so we get i get there the next morning because they tell me just to come back once it's like you know later in the day when the doctor's actually there the doctor it's so funny, I just have to say this description of him. I walk in, I'm like, who's the doctor? It's this guy in jeans and a wolf t-shirt. And I'm just like, how is, he doesn't even have a lab coat on. Like, how do I trust this man? But he, so he goes in and he like, just he plucks out the rest of it in one foul swoop. There's the head, the cockroach is gone. He gives me some medicine for my ear and then we just leave. So that was like the craziest thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> Filipino people are like the kindest people you'll ever meet. They have like basically nothing, but they're willing to give you everything. And that was something that I just really loved about them. Just every time we'd go over to anyone's house, like maybe we were contacting them on the street and they invited us in, like they would like get you a soda or, you know, give you whatever snack food that they had because they just like wanted to make you feel welcome at their home. And I just thought that was really interesting because I feel like as an American, like we don't really do that like if someone like came to your door unannounced like you wouldn't really like invite them in and be like oh like have some food if, especially if you don't know them you know but they're they're just very open and they're very willing to like invite you to be part of their life which i thought was really fun and just really interesting before i went to my mission i was really excited because i'd heard that they were like a rice based mission and I love rice and so it was great because they eat it three times a day morning afternoon night with just like a little bit of meal and like this much rice so it was great because um, it like filled you up quicker I felt like but it was also cheap so um, I really I tried balut so that was pretty cool I only had it once we'll never do it again um, I really liked all of the like chicken dishes like chicken adobo and chicken tenola um, Everything is cooked in garlic and onion. So don't expect anything like without it But I really liked the food there and I was really Lucky to have people that wanted to feed us a lot of the time So my first area was called Mandama, which was a break off of Hermosa that was in Bataan and they speak mainly Tagalog there there were some people that spoke some different dialects but at that point in my mission I didn't really know what was different and what wasn't because it all sounded gibberish to me. Uh, Mandama was definitely provincial. Yeah it was a provincial area so it was a lot of farming and that one wasn't near the water so there wasn't really any fishermen but they're mostly like people that worked in the rice fields and like we had, a, there was a couple of elementary schools, maybe. Like I don't really know. It was it was a pretty small area for my first area. We were able to walk the whole thing, so that was pretty cool. But yeah, it was basically only dirt roads only. There was one street that ran through the entire town, and then just like break offs of dirt roads. And so my second area was Pilar. That was also in Bataan, so it was um, a bit more south than my first area. And that was actually a really cool area. Um, we had to cross a river, a river several times a week, which was kind of weird because like at first I was like, wow, we have to cross a river? Like that's so intimidating. But it was, I don't know, it was very interesting that like there were so many different types of places in the Philippines. Like the first area was very farmland. Second area, like there was a lot of rice fields as well because I mean, that's what you're going to find up there. But there's also a lot more like running like water as running water as in like lakes and rivers and things like that and um, that's also where the Mount, Mount Summit is. It's like a famous place in the Philippines. It's a tourist spot. So like you go up this mountain, several miles into the mountain and there's like a huge cross. So you can see that from any part of that area and 
it's really cool. Like that's the cross is where it's like the very end of the or the start of the Bataan death march, I think. Or it's just they have like some memorials from World War II there, which was really cool. We got to go one time. My third area was San Augustine, which was a break off of Iba which is in Zambali. And that was my favorite, like one of my favorite areas by far. I was only there for 10 weeks. The people spoke a little bit more of a different dialect. Like they speak, spoke more Zambal, which is like a, a Zambali, Zambal. It's like a dialect just in Zambali. I don't know. I didn't really understand that, but they could all speak Tagalog as well. So that was good but sometimes they would break off into Zambal and I was like, uh, just gonna sit here and pretend like I understand. The culture there was basically the same, rice fields. A lot of people lived in the mountains at that point. My fourth area was my longest area. I was there in Infanta for seven and a half months and that was the area on the beach. So like there was a lot of appointments where we just like get to take off our shoes and like walk along the beach to like the houses that were on there. And that was like, I thought that was pretty cool because I was like, wow, like I get to walk like on in the South China Sea. Like that's like not a lot of people can say that. So it was like really cool because it was on the beach. Almost all of the men were fishermen. In my fifth area was Apollo, which is a city. So I hadn't been in a city yet. And that was also in Bataan. That was just basically like more city, like night, bigger houses were built there. And there were still some smaller houses, but mostly like more of the like wealthier people lived there, which was interesting because I'd never really interacted with them before. I really liked it there. It was also, I, I mean, I loved all of my areas, but Apollo like will always hold a special place in my heart just because the people there were so loving to me, even though I was like going home in six weeks, they knew that I was going home. It was my last transfer, but they just took me in and took, took me in as if I was going to be there forever. So I really appreciate them and love that ward to death. So.